Glutamine is a remarkable amino acid because it can fuel your intestinal lining, strengthen the gut barrier, and support overall gut health. In fact, the cells lining your GI tract love it so much, they can go full Joey Trubiani and gobble it up directly. So while your muscles may love protein, your gut prefers glutamine. In fact, here's world-leading research scientist, Dr. Dominic D'Agostino explaining to Dr. Rhonda Patrick just how much your gut loves glutamine. The gut's gonna be very greedy when it comes to glutamine. Very greedy. So. so if it wasn't clear already, glutamine is your gut's best friend. In today's video, we're going to look at how you can get more glutamine in your diet. And we'll do that, of course, by looking at the best glutamine-rich foods. So you can really prioritize which foods to eat. We'll even rank them from highest glutamine content to lowest. Let's go. So first up, which foods contain glutamine? Well, if you've already done some research into glutamine-rich foods, you've probably read a few articles online or seen some videos on YouTube. They all look pretty similar. You'll get a list of protein-rich foods like chicken, beef, and eggs, plus some vegetables like cabbage, as well as other foods like nuts. In fact, here's Stanford University's very own Dr. Andrew Huberman, a neuroscientist and host of the very popular Huberman Lab podcast, discussing which foods are rich in glutamine. Glutamine is rich in protein-rich foods, things like beef, chicken, fish, dairy products, eggs, but also for you non-animal um, food uh, consuming people out there, um, vegetables including beans, cabbage once again, spinach, parsley, things of that sort. So those foods contain glutamine. Now, while this sort of list is interesting, it's not extremely useful. After all, you're probably wondering how much glutamine is actually in each food, what other foods are high in glutamine, and of course, which foods are the highest in glutamine. But here's the thing, it's really hard to find data on how much glutamine is in foods. For example, you won't find it in the USDA database, and you won't find it in other credible nutritional databases like ESHA. And so unsurprisingly, most experts simply don't answer these questions. And of the few experts that do try to answer them, well, they often end up confusing glutamate or glutamic acid with glutamine, meaning their answers are not very accurate. Of course, here at Essential Stacks, we are glutamine experts as we make gut L glutamine, one of the most popular glutamine powders available. So as you can imagine, our research team has the answers for you that no one else does. And that's exactly what we'll focus on now. So in terms of what foods are high in glutamine, the general rule is if it has a significant amount of protein, it will also have a good amount of glutamine. And that's because glutamine is one of the main amino acids you'll find in protein. To find out exactly how much glutamine is in protein, we had to do some digging into the scientific literature. Thankfully, we found this 2000 research paper published in the World Journal of Surgery, where researchers found, quote, most naturally occurring food proteins contain four to 8% of their amino acid residues as glutamine, unquote. In other words, roughly 6% on average of the protein in foods comes from glutamine. So what does this all mean for you? Well, let's illustrate it by showing an example. So say you ate an eight ounce or 240 gram serving of steak. Using the USDA database, we can say steak, in this instance, strip or porterhouse, contains about 22.7 grams of protein per 100 grams. That would mean your filet of steak would have 54.5 grams of total protein in it. And if roughly 6% of that protein is in the form of glutamine, it means we can say there's likely around 3.27 grams of glutamine in the steak. Now that you can see how the protein content of food determines whether it is high in glutamine or not, let's run these numbers for the 10 foods Dr. Huberman mentioned in his video and see whether they're really good sources of glutamine or not. Just before we look at how much glutamine is in these foods, it is worth mentioning that our research team at Essential Stacks has pulled the protein content of the foods straight from the USDA food database. That way the numbers are all consistent with each other. So first up, let's look at beef. As we can see here, beef has 26 grams of protein in every 100 grams of meat. And if 6% of this is glutamine, then we can say there is 1.56 grams of glutamine in every 100 grams. Now let's run those numbers and see how chicken, fish, dairy products, and eggs look. So now we can see the glutamine content of these other animal-based foods, which Dr. Huberman mentioned as being good sources of glutamine. As you can see, chicken, fish, and cheese are all delivering sizable amounts of glutamine, roughly in line with beef. Well, eggs are delivering about half as much, and milk is delivering just a fraction of the glutamine. 
Now let's look at the plant-based foods Dr. Huberman mentioned. Okay, so this is interesting. Beans, in this case we use pinto beans as a proxy for beans, are delivering a very respectable amount of glutamine, almost on par with the animal-based foods. By contrast, cabbage, spinach, and parsley clearly have much less glutamine. And that's not surprising since they don't contain much protein. Now while this data is interesting, it's not very useful since the serving size of these foods can differ quite a lot. For example, most people will eat more than 100 grams of beef in a meal, while almost no one, except for maybe our French friends across the pond, is going to eat 100 grams of parsley in a sitting. So let's look at how much glutamine you'll enjoy per serving of each food. And just before we show you the data, it's worth mentioning that our research team debated what constitutes a typical serving size of these foods. After all, there is so much conflicting info out there on this. For example, if you look at the American Heart Association, they recommend three ounces of meat as a serving size. But here's the thing, that is not very reflective of how much people eat in real life. So we worked hard to find the right balance for serving sizes of each food. And you can see what we believe is a typical serving size on your screen now. We think this balances healthy eating with reality. So with these serving sizes in mind, now let's see how much glutamine each food delivers in a typical serving size. This is fascinating, right? Chicken, steak, and fish are clearly the best sources of glutamine, delivering around 2.5 grams of glutamine each per serving. Meanwhile, eggs and beans are not bad either, giving us around one gram of glutamine per serving. The dairy products in milk and cheese are a bit further behind, both offering around half a gram of glutamine, roughly. Lastly, the other plant-based foods that Dr. Huberman said were good sources of glutamine, well, we can see they are offering just a fraction of the glutamine you'll find in the animal-based sources, meaning they are not great sources of glutamine. For example, you'll find roughly 4,700% more glutamine in a filet of chicken than you would find in half a cup of cooked cabbage. Now you can see which types of foods contain high amounts of glutamine, as well as which ones don't offer much glutamine by comparison. So now I bet you're wondering, how can you eat more glutamine-rich foods? Well, the first thing you should do is download our free top 50 glutamine foods list. This will show you the highest glutamine foods you can eat, including how much glutamine you'll get per serving. Link to this in the description below. Next, you should watch another video we made. In it, we show you how to build a day of glutamine rich meals from breakfast to dinner. Very cool. And finally, you should check out one more video we recorded recently. It goes through how much glutamine to take per day. This will be really helpful for you since it will help you set the right glutamine target to match your health goals. And of course, the link to that is also in the description below. Just before we finish the video, myself and the research team at Essential Stacks wanted to mention that better glutamine data has emerged since the 2000 paper we mentioned earlier. But the problem is that it is very limited. And if you wanna geek out with us, I'll quickly explain what has happened. So basically in 2009, this study appeared in the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. These researchers used gene sequencing to determine the precise glutamine content of six foods. <laughs> See what I mean? It was very limited. And so while the 2000 study declared four to 8% of protein content in food as glutamine, these researchers found the range may be somewhat wider and differs across the food groups. Here are the results of the six key foods they measured. And to make this more useful for you, we crunched the numbers and built them out for the six foods using our table structure, which we can see on the screen now. So a few interesting takeaways we found from this 2009 study. Firstly, although the precise glutamine content of beef and eggs were lower than the 6% average figure we used in our earlier analysis, the overall picture that beef and to a lesser extent eggs are high glutamine foods remains clear. Secondly for milk though, it was interesting to see the precise glutamine content Content being higher, coming in at 8.1%. This bumps the actual glutamine content up a bit, making milk slightly more respectable in terms of being a glutamine-rich food. Thirdly, for the three plant-based foods in rice, corn, and tofu, well, the results were fascinating. They were much higher in glutamine as a percentage of protein than the 4 to 8% range. For example, a whopping 16.2% of every gram of protein in corn is in the form of glutamine. 
Of course, these plant-based foods don't have as much total protein as the animal-based foods, especially beef. So when you crunch the numbers, you can see the glutamine per 100 grams is still much less than beef. So if we look at the numbers of glutamine per serving though, we can see that rice and tofu are pretty decent sources of glutamine, while corn is a moderate source. So the two big takeaways here. One, high protein animal-based foods remain the best source of glutamine and sit in the four to 8% glutamine range in line with the earlier study. And two, some plant-based foods may also offer respectable amounts of glutamine as many sit above the four to 8% range. With all that said, the reality is that most people looking to increase their glutamine intake are doing so to support their gut health. And if you are one of them, then you probably know all too well that certain plant-based foods like legumes, tofu, and corn may not be easy to tolerate, especially at these serving sizes. And finally, if eating more glutamine-rich foods like meat and seafood sounds like a chore or something that might quickly get expensive, then there's a much easier way to get extra glutamine, and that is by taking a glutamine powder. We, of course, make this, gut L glutamine. It is made right here in the USA, contains no animal products, and is third-party tested. Best of all, <laughs> it is a much more affordable source of glutamine than food. For example, while filet of steak and salmon may deliver five grams of glutamine together, they will also cost around 15 to $20. By contrast, one scoop of gut L glutamine, which also delivers five grams of glutamine, costs only 50 cents. And so if you're interested in trying it, you'll find a link to it in the description below. Now we wanna hear from you. What is your favorite glutamine food? Let everyone know by leaving a comment below. If you enjoyed this video as part of our glutamine series, then hit the like and subscribe button to make sure you never miss another video. Our team of dietitians and doctors here at Essential Stacks are so excited to continue researching which foods and supplements help your gut health. That way you can save hundreds of hours of trial and error and focus on what's best for your digestive health. Thanks for watching and see you in the comments. Bye for now.